Okay. Thanks for coming. Today I'm going to talk about the modern northern region of Korea. Today we know of uh, North Korea and South Korea, but there was a whole rich history and people that existed within that northern region. And when we study uh, Korean history today, sometimes we lump the whole peninsula into one history. It wasn't that um, simple. So what we're going to talk about is the uh, Changgan province and Pyongyang, the capital of Tanglei, North Korea, and Hongkei. What was what ancient North Korea in the late and early first century of like for So we're going to talk about, like I said, regional approach to study history. After aftermath of the Japanese invasion and the national invasion, how that helped the northern region be economically successful, and then the discrimination that some of this northern region people faced, and what that means for today. Right. So, the northern region geographically is less suited for farming in the south, so the north had to rely on trade and commerce and industry and mining. What, and that, what that meant is that after the the war happened and during the war, because of its proximity to Qin China, it um, got a lot of trade going through as a kind of a checkpoint between Japan or a checkpoint between the capital of Korea and part of China. Now there was the benefits and disadvantages to being closer to China. The, the benefit is that you get to be the first stop on all these traders to China trips to the, the capital, but the bad part is that when the Chinese government comes to a tribute nation, they're the place to stop and give a tribute. So, um, the capital would send aid to the northern region so that they could pay these tribute missions. But as relations between Qing and China and, uh, and Korea and just in Korea got better, the tributary demand what that meant is that local fisheries had a lot of excess capital and benefits to then loan out to traders or miners to put into their businesses and really develop, leading to a lot of economic development in the northern region. More so or equal to them the capital. Now, because these rich people have all this money, they invest a lot of time and money into establishing the Confucian culture. Of uh, factional politics, every every region was trying to get the upper hand, and it became a competition to become who was more efficient. So, based on things that they could get from the south, the north put a lot of time and money into making sure that they had lots of people who pass this so much over them. But despite um, a really high, we call it civil exam, capital number of people passing this. Yeah. Factional politics made a lot of this northern elite and northern literati, as they call it, um, not given fair and equal opportunity to get to the position. So here I have a, a great graph of 50 year blocks of Korean history where you can see in the northern region the number of people who passed the civil service again. Now, as the, starting the 1600s, the year 1600s, so as that goes up, it increases. So we have over 300 between 1850 and 1900. But despite all of that increase in people passing, so qualified people for government positions, Mitterati from the north were not given the credit for the increase in position because of factional politics. Right. So one of the, the major events that I've researched, there was a, in 1699, there was a scandal that people taking the civil service exam, a whole group of them were accused of being found to be cheap. And what happened is uh, the factions that wanted to stay in power would bribe the officials that were running the press and the people who were anyone involved would get bribed so that their faction people who were taking the test would pass it and stay in power. Now another interesting thing about these civil service exams is that as we went to go take the test of the great country, I don't know if we're talking about culture, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so yeah, you had factions based on region and factions based on patriarchy and disciples that were more of the south that had control of the whole map in order to 
And then in 1714, there was a report by Joe T. He's a bad guy. Well, he, he went to the north and said that the northern region was not Confucian and outlawed them from taking the civil service. No one in the north could take the civil service for many years until another government official who was from the north had a, a reform and actually got ousted from office. So, here's a little thing I know uh, northern literature. Writers from the north would have, they had many things that appeared over and over again that was maintaining the virtue was more important than government jobs or government recognition. The story of forcing him not was he was a very <laughs> capable soldier and he killed anyone he wanted and he killed his cheating wife, he killed thieves, and then when it came for him to be in communist, he got passed over to him and his friends went around running over to the office for the rest of his life. And then the beggar from Conway, he there was a government official asking the beggar to fill up his pail of water or something, and he could tell the beggar was intelligent, and the beggar was the past the lower level of town that was in the state of town. Maintain his virtue and talk about his means and how to do this and stuff. Alright, then I'm going to talk about, a little bit about what all that discrimination, what all that economic development means for today. And since it's BYU, why not talk about the missionary development in the northern region of Korea? So, because the northern region was so close to China, they were used to new ideas and they were used to just experiencing new things, so they had a higher they were more tolerant of diversity than the rest of the different nations in the world. And they depended on this trade, they depended on interaction with other parts of the world. Um, they already felt a little bit marginalized and discriminated against the capital. So that when when Christianity came in and promised equality and everyone was loved by God, that really took hold, and the capital of current day North Korea, Pyongyang, before the communist took over, was a very strong hold of Christianity. So, what that means for today further is that when Japan came in, they kind of took the model that all of Korea was the same, there was an regional difference between people, and like that and collaborators to try and get more power than the northern competitors gave the Japanese the idea that northern were sort of kind of warlike and fierce and, and the southerners were the docile and that kind of translated into the U.S. is from But open, overall, this years of discrimination led to North Korea being more open to ideas of equality. So it was like, did Christianity had to be, have an easier time then, like before they split off into North and South Korea and were isolated? Okay. And then these are the books I used. Sandra Shape, a professor up in Seattle, she did a lot of work on the northern region of Korea. These articles are coming out. And this is the book for my class. Like a fashion point. Thank you.